Welcome to Fulham Fix. Thank See, you, the season's, season's over, man. That's it. It's, it, it's, it's all but done, man. How Just me and you in, a, in an empty Craven cottage contemplating how long we have to wait till we can watch some football again. How are you feeling about it all? Is, is there a sense of sadness, a sense of accomplishment? There is definitely, there is definitely a massive sense of accomplishment. Um, sadness, sadness only because you know you've got to wait yeah. for more great football. Yeah. But it's been like, just watching us play, even though, you know, some of the results didn't go away, you know, against some of the big clubs. We were in every game though, man. Yeah. You look at City yeah. and Man United... You know, the big a few times we were we were in every single game. Yeah, do you know what I mean. And that that was a really refreshing feeling. Yeah, yeah. There's something something to be said for when we play in the championship, or certainly in, you know in the recent few years we played in the championship. We've been a kind of a, a big dog that's been in every game, and that other teams have feared. Sure. And it was really nice to come up to the Premier League, and still have that mentality up here. Still have that kind of yeah, we're one of the big dogs. We've come to. You know, we yeah. come to play against the best of them and we then got that reputation. You know, I, I always love, I don't know if, if you get this, before games and, and you're hearing from the other team's managers and stuff like that, you're hearing from their press conferences, they've always gone, obviously, you know, Fulham are a, you know, a fantastic attack inside, yeah, a tough yeah. side to beat. I always just, a my heart is a little, that. you know, yeah. which always beats that, you know, obviously Fulham are, you know, they're, they're in trouble at the moment, but, you know, you can never, you know, yeah, th yeah. those those ones totally. we've had in recent years in the Premier League. So it's really nice, really refreshing. It's and you just hope, you just want it to kind of snowball into yeah, next it's season. Kind of telling, you know? isn't it? Yeah, I mean, a lot of Fulham fan sites been bragging in the last week or so. I think we spoke about it last episode very briefly, but but everybody tipped us to go down pretty yeah. much yeah. twentieth at the bottom of the league. So it's actually everyone had us rock bottom. But pretty much over uh, you know, like, over Forest. Pretty much oh, everyone wow. was saying first team to get relegated was Fulham. Wow. So it's been testament to them all that we finished tenth, and actually. And also that we're slightly disappointed finishing 10th. There was a moment in the season where we felt like top six, top seven finish. I think that feasible. speaks volumes. And I, you do wonder, you think, you know, if Mitro doesn't get the, the you know, the ban. Yeah, right. That did <coughs> happen. You know, uh, do we finish a bit higher? Do we finish, you know, possibly eight? Do, I, I certainly think we'd finish above Brentford. But they found a way to survive without Mitro as well, didn't they? We yep. won games. We got points in that period. I love Marcus Silva. And I mean, the man is, has got a fantastic plan A. Like a fanta and it's clearly effective. Yep. But what's been wonderful this season is he's got a really effective plan B. Yes, yeah, clearly, yeah. You know, and, and that was really exciting to see. It was exciting because I remember thinking when, when we had that first game without Mitro and we had the 30 crosses into the box, yep. for which I don't think any of them were converted, the most all season of any Premier League team, mm -hmm. that, you know, and... and um, Vinicius didn't, he just isn't quite the same player in the air as Mitro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did think, oh man, are we, uh, are we a bit screwed these next eight games? And then the game after he played, you know, false number nine. I think everyone Totally different. Yeah. But fantastic. And yeah, I'm like, totally no, no. Set up. He's got a plan B. Yeah, He's, yeah. And he, yeah, I, honestly, love if, him. If um, anyone knows, you'll know this. What have you felt about the atmosphere at the cottage? Like, ha has this year felt upper level in terms of the feeling? On Saturdays at the cottage, I think so. There's a, there's a there's a lot of buzz now. With every game, there's there's uh, it, it, people are expecting to see a great performance. People are excited to see a great performance. Yeah, you know, I've been here in in enough of the low times to know what it feels like when people are expecting. You know, they just want to survive a game. Can we yeah. get out of this with our heads just above water? Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's none of that. We've not had any of that at the moment. Yeah. You know, there's a weird confidence and, and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a lovely place to be. And even nicer that, you know, the Riverside's now starting to fill up. Hopefully, but I don't know if it's the You mean start. the Berbatov stand. The Berbatov stand is now starting to fill up. Yeah. The Dimmy stand. And, um, you know. Because he, of course, envisaged it. Because it, it's his club. stand. It's just <laughs> fact. Um, and uh, it was nice to him during COVID to crack on and keep building <laughs> <laughs> if I'm honest, I could have really slowed down. I think down. I dreamt something about Berbatov. I think I dreamt something about the Berbatov stand. Was it? Yeah, we were talking about it so much. I dreamt something about Berbatov. Imagine, or, or like, <laughs> in the riverside wow. himself. Yeah, anyway. Wow. Yeah. Well, if it comes back to you, you've got to let us know. Oh my God, my brain is messed yeah, yeah, up, isn't it? Well, you've been on a lot of flights recently. I have, and I've been lag. away. So I wasn't at Old Trafford because I was in New York. So I yeah. missed the last few games of the season, which was sad, really, because it's been such a beautiful one. Mm. Where do you think... Th there was a time when we were saying this might be the greatest season in the history of Fulham Football Club yeah. in terms of top flight. It probably will end just shy of that. But in terms of what you're talking about mm. in confidence, I don't... 
Oh, so, oh, so, <laughs> Sorry, so, Jeff, did you just burp? <laughs> I thought, he, I thought he was going I well. Thought you were correcting you, me. Yeah, I was like, you can't say that. Me. <laughs> what happened is, is Jeff just Jeff just burped. For the record, that's, that's fine, Jeff man. who um, got married last week. Yeah, and the video you circulated. He's still, he's on, still on, on a hangover. Media. So the first dance yeah. was uh, freed from desire, but it was a beautiful acoustic version <laughs> until about a minute into the song. Yeah, and then it kicked right off. And then because it's all Fulham fans there, isn't it? So it ends in a sort of meet shows on fire. Barn dance. And if you're wondering where the clappers went this season, uh, they're all at Jeff's wedding, apparently. He's really? a, he is where all the clappers are gone. So, yeah. um, no, absolute joy anyway. Uh, Jeff, you're right for us to continue, buddy. <laughs> 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 what were we talking about? Oh, you were in America. Oh, sorry. So, you are sad to so was, we were, oh, No, we're saying just uh, finishing just shy of, of our best season yeah, ever. Sh- but, yeah. but I was going to say, there's a the confidence two. in it. I, mm. I don't think I've seen a more competitive Fulham team in the image of oh, their yeah, manager yeah, yeah. where... They won't tolerate being second best. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's been a diff- that's been a difference, I think, about this Fulham team. Yeah, even like we might as well get into it. My player of the year, and most people's will re- probably be Polinia. Yeah, and just watching him dominate his area in midfield, that attitude of like it's an affront to him. Yep. If anyone has the ball in his zone, mm. you're getting slammed, yeah, or he's yeah, dominating yeah, yeah. it. Right. I've rarely seen. Fulham players with that mentality. No. Do you know what I mean? That really elite sort of level of like, no one's getting this ball in this zone. You know yeah. what I mean? hundred percent. A hundred percent. Who would your player of the year be? I, my, I, I think I probably second your Zhao Polinia, but you know, up there with Zhao, you've got to have William and Burnt Leno. Yeah. Oh, Leno's an interesting one. Yeah. I mean, Leno, I think has been responsible for saving us from like 16 or 17 points. Is that right? Saves. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, like I said, I mentioned this on the podcast before, but I think it's, this is what it feels like. And we've maybe, you know, a few times during our history, we've had, you know, some real true world-class players. And I feel like this is what it feels like to have a world-class goalie. Yeah. Um, you know, you, these big clubs have them where you know, you you realise how many points they'll, you know, mm. clubs like United and City have these world-class goalies and you realise how many points they're responsible for yeah. those seasons, saving yeah. that club, you know, and, and I, I feel like that's what we've got in Burnt Leno. I think, you know, I'm hoping that he, he sticks with us for many, many years and, and I think he'll, he'll end up being, end up being one of the, the greatest goalkeepers we've ever had at the club, which is a massive statement to make because we've had some fantastic keepers. It's about keeping them, isn't it? Because, I mean, Leicester getting relegated... I mean, it's so easy to have one great year and then, do you, do you know what I mean? You could, Leicester's always a crazy be that fear. one, isn't it? You win, two, two FA Cups, a Premier League, they, finishing they top four a few times. Two years ago, they won the FA yeah, Cup. Yeah, but it makes you realise how easily Exactly. So it, that's it what I'm saying. Turn. When you're saying keeping Leno, it's like, just, if we can just keep mm. the majority of this core, of this side. Yeah, 100%. They can achieve amazing things. But we got to, just on a, on a different note, I'm, I'm there thinking, oh man, have I, you know, you by just naming William Leno and Polinia, you're taking away Pereira, what he's done. He's yeah. been incredible. Tim Ream, who, you know, like the man's found like, you know, the elixir of young life or, you know, whatever it is, just the, the guy does, nice phrase. He's just, uh, you know, thanks man. Just thought of that right there. That's really nice. And uh, Tete. Yeah, Tete. Oh my God. I mean, like, again, another thing we, we, we were chatting about just before, um, uh, the episode just off air, we were talking about the fact that Tete, how he wasn't snapped up by another club when we went down with him, uh, you know, a few seasons Parker's ago. Team, yeah. Um, and if the, I think it worked in our favour that he was injured for so long yeah. because, you know, it meant that, you know, we were kind of, you know, people kind of didn't notice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you put someone like Tete in the championship and it's, you know, it's one of the main reasons that, and obviously Mitrovic up front, but it's yeah. so it's incredible performance. Yeah. Very modern fullback, isn't he? Modern, and but again, he's solid. And he's, and he's yeah. again, he's another one, a bit like Polinia, where it's like, you know, you dare get in my area. This is my zone. Totally. If you're going to come in here with the ball. You're going to expect me yeah. to absolutely go it's, for it. It's that collective mentality. Yeah, and I know we spoke about it before. And and obviously with, with away at United, that being a heartbreaking moment in the, the cup game, obviously. But as I live with that more and more, I can't help but feel like, oh, that was something really positive about that. Yeah. But they just would not accept being second best yeah. anywhere. And even though you're sort of still balancing, 
exactly how to get that right all the time. Yeah. Just that we're just not used to seeing Fulham no. teams with that mindset. No, we're used to seeing them give other teams time to play. Yeah, respect other teams. Yeah, you no, know, and there's none of that something. here. <laughs> it's the way it should be. We have no respect for anyone. No, I'm quite saying, right too. They do respect. Come people. on, but no, of course you know they do. Of course they do. Yeah, no, I'm with you. What's with your you. Um, goal of the season? It was, again, so many brilliant ones. Uh, I love a last-minute winner. Go on. So Mitrovic against Brentford is up there for mm. me. Uh, I mean, um, Vinicius against Chelsea, yes. just for the emotional side of it. Willian against Chelsea, you know, again, for, for the emotional side of it, you know. and um, But Willian against Forrest was, yeah. was outrageous, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, again, it's just like... I you mean, know, that was goal of the month, I know, believe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And quite rightly okay. so. I mean, he, you, you know, just... And you're like this. This this guy's what 34, 34, 35. I mean, I, don't, I mean, even so, it's like everyone's been another success story in this Fulham squad of everyone talking about like he's he's over the that's a statement fence, yeah, over the fence. That's not the phrase, is it? He's, he's over the hill. He's over the hill. Yeah, <laughs> or a fence, fence or a hill. But he's you know he's passed it. He's passed his best, and you know he's come here to Fulham, and he's I mean, good God, he's playing like a lion, unbelievable, yep. scoring some great goals. Putting in some great assists, just his pace. Yeah. Someone said to me about William, and I really like this, is it looks like it's harder for him to walk than to run. <laughs> if you look at him when he's walking, he looks like he's in pain. Yes. Yeah, and it's like, it's going to be a lot easier for me if I run everywhere, guys. Yeah. Because walking hurts. It's a good observation that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever he gets substituted off, it it's looks like, so oh, painful, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But if he runs off, it's like, no, that's that's how he's meant to be. But that's Keep a statement. You're right. That's a statement goal and a statement season from William. Yeah. I think that would have, like, that would feel good within himself that he's proved something. But he probably didn't need to prove. But yeah. we spoke to him about that, didn't we? And that's been really beautiful. Yeah. No, definitely. What's your goal of the season? Thank you for asking. My goal would be um, here yeah. at the Putney end, Polina against Leeds in the FA Cup. Mm. I know that that was because it wasn't a league game and not a massive game at the time. It didn't feel like a massive game because no. it was sort of three quarters full here. But that ping was yeah. just like testament. It's just indicative of the quality that guy has. Yeah, 100%. You know? and I talked about owning that area. I think most Fulham fans that watched Polina this year would put him in the most gifted Fulham players they've ever seen in modern history. Yeah. And so you've, you've had Moussa Dembele, people like that. Mm. And the way he commands his area with Harrison is fantastic. But when you see someone capable just ping in yeah, 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 <laughs> 40 yeah, yeah, yards, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. who's our guest this week? Rachel Yankee. Yeah, legend. I mean, the first uh, professional English footballer, um, an absolute legend yeah. uh, in in the women's game but in football in general and was so lovely to talk to she was brilliant wasn't she she was brilliant sadly wasn't able to join us in the studio because I think was it her daughter wasn't well I had a yeah, doctor's yeah. thing so we, we would sort of we, we did it on Zoom which was, actually worked out fine And um, but we got to meet her little one via Zoom as well she was part of the conversation she, she was part of the conversation I'm sure James has probably edited most of that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was crying <laughs> so, occasionally bless her heart yeah and um, do you know what I, when Rachel was here uh, playing Fulham that's something I remember really vividly actually is it was just in that sort of Tagana Alfaid era and the thing that I missed is that because the Women's World Cup at that time had gone massive in America yeah. how visionary it was of Fulham and Alfaid to say we're going to start the first professional female team they trained yeah. where the men's team trained all that yeah. kind of thing and if you fast forward what is it it's probably 20 years now but Not we, were actually, we were actually uh, like way ahead of, uh, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? It, groundbreaking at the it time. It was yeah, groundbreaking. Yeah, yeah. And she talks about how we because they were so professional, they were trying yeah. to beat teams like 15. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like, kind of, what was it, the FA Cup game? Which is, yeah, something like that. Yeah, we'll we, yeah, we get into that. No, anyway. Go on, go on. Isn't there a lovely moment where well, she do? Because <laughs> you know when football teams will go one to rough and they'll go back to halfway line and go nil, nil, yeah? Nil, nil, yeah, yeah, yeah. boys. They were trying to beat teams 15 nil. So when <laughs> like 20 minutes in, they'd be going, 9 nil, yeah, girls. <laughs> so 9 nil. I bet every single other team hated for them at the <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, exactly, yeah. For being those people. But yeah, I mean, it, it was a joy. It was lovely. Should we, uh, should we give it a listen, man? Rachel Yankee, here is. Come on, Fulham. We are joined by the first female professional footballer and uh, a receiver of the Forever Fulham Award. How are you doing, Rachel Yankee? I'm good, thank you. Oh, yeah. Rachel, so nice to see you. Nice to see you at the cottage last week. How was that? Enjoy it. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was a bit. It was a bit weird to be quite honest. I haven't been there for so long. Sure. Um, but it's just, I don't know, just such a, a wicked stadium, and the, and the new, 
and the newer stand just looks brilliant. But do you know, it's just like real homely, isn't it? So yeah, um, yeah. back and going on the pitch and yeah, I suppose it, I suppose it topped it off for me because it was against Arsenal, obviously two teams that that I played for. So um, so yeah, it was very very nice day out. I think we've got to uh, address the uh, the very tiny elephant in the room <laughs> <laughs> right now <laughs> is um, um, uh, Rachel, you've been kind enough to join us um, uh, from home. You've got your, uh, you couldn't join us in the studio because uh, you're uh, looking after your daughter who has just woken up a bit early from her nap <laughs> and is also going to join us, um, bless her heart, uh, in this, uh, in this, in this uh, chat. So, um, so we might hear a few, uh, she's one years old, is that right? She's just over one. Yeah, she's just over one. So, um, and she's eating her little veggie crisp thing so if you can hear like random noises <laughs> that little crunching coming from that end yeah that's that's what you're hearing <laughs> Rachel can I ask are, are there any early signs of her being really good at football <laughs> um probably too, no <laughs> no nothing let's yet. be honest um, no, nothing yet. Probably too uh, too early. What was it? What was it that they? You know, maybe your parents saw in you when you were growing up with with football. Is there what, what were the telltale signs that you know you 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 had the skills? As Great it were. question. Um, do you know what? I think it was. To be honest, like I suppose it's, it's changed a bit now, but like we used to just all play out and play on the streets yeah. and, and like just constantly be be out on the road playing playing football or down the park local park playing football so I just used to there were two boys that lived across the road from me and we used to just tag along with them and we used to just go go and play football and tell our parents would call us back home um, so I don't think it was that you know I grew up with my mum but I don't think my mum spotted anything in me and was like I think she just sort of was like oh she's not getting in trouble <laughs> Was, so it always leave like, it be. was it always like really natural for you to play football? Like a lot of um, footballers or sports people would say that like that just something felt like it was instinctive to, to do it. Was it always like that for you for, from a young age? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I just, my, my older brother probably wasn't that keen on actual playing football. He was more into like, um, like video games and stuff like that. Yeah. And, I just had to be, you know, involved in, in the natural game. Even if it, like, I liked cricket, but like, I wouldn't sit down and watch cricket. Sure. I had to be playing cricket or doing athletics. I had to be yeah. doing it. So, um, so yeah, I think that was, that was kind of me. Mm-hmm. And it's, is it true that, so when you were starting out, obviously there isn't the, the support that there is now for women's football. Um, is it true that you had to kind of, pretend to almost be a boy to play is that is that just kind of rumors online is that an internet myth yeah yeah no um i, di- I didn't have to it was a choice <laughs> oh, so you um, did actually so you you you, you actually yeah. went with wow. it yeah all right there weren't growing up there weren't any where i lived there weren't really any teams but there definitely weren't any girls teams so um and no one really knew about it like girls playing football I, I kind of just thought that I was I was the only girl in the world that liked football and, and like I said the two boys that lived across the road um, they went to a different school to me but that one of the dads at their school was setting up a football team because there was nothing around right um, so he set up football sessions in like the South Kilburn estate and um, and yeah, they, they were going down there and I sort of tagged along and then we all realised that it was a boys team. Um, I don't know how much this sort of went in pattern, but they were getting a haircut. I went and tagged along and I got my haircut as well. And just the same as theirs, which what was I don't that? think please my mum. Like a grade one. <laughs> was it all over? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just my hair off, so. And so at yeah, that point, was it like, a, you just, you just, it wasn't that you were saying I'm a boy, you were saying it just, you, no one, you, you just didn't mention that you were a girl playing football in, in that team. Um, no, well, in, I, see, I don't feel like there wasn't like a crusade, like I was, I just wanted to play football and I really didn't understand why everyone sort of made a big deal about it. Yeah. Um, and then it was the, the boys team. So it was my friend Lawrence that I don't think I was clever enough to realize my initials actually spell Ray. Um, so he, he was like, well, we'll just call you Ray. I just joined in the team and as Ray and everyone, do you know what it is? It's quite easy to fool people 
I, I was a tomboy. I, I did, you know, I had short hair, but the way I played football, they, they, everyone would look and be like, no girl could play football like that. The way I moved, the way wow. my balance, the way I kicked the ball. So people just ultimately just thought I was a boy. So even, I'm sure even if I had long hair, they probably would have thought I was a boy just because the way that I played football. Um, so it was quite easy to fool people. The manager knew I was a girl. He was really good, to be fair. Um, because he he just didn't see, so <laughs> he didn't have any problem um, with a girl playing football. Um, so he kind of um, he, he kind of kept up the um, the pretense and, <laughs> and made the lie even bigger by yeah telling all the other players. Um, he, he gave me my kit when we played that I got changed at home and. Wow. Um, you know, he just he just make up stories. So, <laughs> it was one big lie. <laughs> it was like a pact between you and him, basically. Yeah, me, yeah. him, obviously my two friends, um, his son, all, all knew that I was a girl. Everybody else thought I was a boy. Are you still in touch? With, are you still in touch with that coach? Because did he see what what you went on to achieve? Yeah. He, well, when I got my played in the hundred and I think there's. I broke Peter Shilton's record, 126 caps um, for England. He came to the game and, and, um, and yeah, I think someone got him to the game and came and sort of gave me a bunch of flowers and stuff like oh, that. Oh, that's which, amazing. I haven't seen him in, in years and years and years and he's now lives up north. And, you know, if it wasn't for him, um, he, he actually, once I was told that I couldn't play for the boys team, his team, he was the one that found me a girls team to play for. So right. I'm very, I'm very, yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. He was your pathway in. Was there any, was there ever anything else you thought I could do that? Or was it always football? Did you have any other passions that you thought, you know, I'm going to, this is how I'm going to dedicate my life. Yeah. I feel like, um, he was the one that sort of, you know, was saying to the league, well, that's totally unfair that a girl can't play mm. in the league. Um, he then, found out the same league ran a girls league but it was there was loads of girls playing football it just wasn't talked about yeah like yeah. a little hidden hidden thing um so he got me um into my first football club which was mill hill united and that's how i started playing and then years later he said to me that was my only regret he said my only regret is that i didn't take you to chelsea <laughs> i realized you were that <laughs> <laughs> like you said that it's um you said that it was um beyond other people's comprehension that a girl could be that good at football like the other interesting thing to me when you're explaining that is like was it in your inside your comprehension that you could play football for a living back then because obviously no one had done that before i mean it was did, did it even seem available to you at that time no no definitely not so um for me i just played football because i enjoyed it um, even playing for a team, I, I definitely didn't see it as a career because there weren't any women playing football. No, so no. growing up, for me, it, I didn't see any any female footballers. So for me, football was a game for men. Um, football was played by men. Football was something that I saw. Oh, if I if I want to play, then you know just. I suppose pretending to be a boy <laughs> was, was was the easiest option. So it didn't really occur to me that, that women played football um, and there were so many women out there that were playing. So, yeah, for me, my heroes were, were, were male footballers. Um, that's who I watched. That's who I saw. That's who I went in the school playground and, and tried to, to emulate. Um, well, we've got to ask at this point know, so who, 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 your, uh, who your, uh, your heroes were then. Which footballers are we talking about? Um, well, Ian Wright, Ian Wright was my, was my hero growing up. I think, you know what it was? It, it was, I felt like you could really relate to the emotion that he played mm. football with, mm. especially when in the cages at school. Um, you know, one minute you, you'd be miserable <laughs> and then you'd score a goal and then you'd have the biggest smile on your face. Yeah. Um, your team would win and then you'd be sulking or like, I felt like when you got when that, that makes his ear right sound really bad, but he went and played football with just all those emotions. You could really read it off of his face, what was going on. Yeah. Um, and I felt like that 
that was up in the playground. That's so interesting because I think that's what um, that's just occurred to me. That's what endures about him even to this day as a pundit, isn't it? It's like him living the moment, having authentic, emotional mm-hmm. responses to everything, even beyond his football career. That's why people really love him, don't they? Yeah, definitely. I think you, you, you can relate to to what he's going through. I feel like at some yes. point in your life, you, you you're going through the same yes. um, emotions. Um, so yeah, that's that. I mean, that's for me why he was just yeah, just one that I'd always look at and be like, oh, you know, want to be in right. Let's let's uh, let's jump forward a little bit to um, to when you had first heard of Fulham. How how did that come about? That connection. You were were you playing for Arsenal at the time? Is that right? Um, yeah, yeah. I um, I knew about Fulham from before. A good uh, friend of mine growing up, Kim Jerry Silver, had signed for Fulham. Um, and was playing for them. I knew about uh, Dina Rahman, who was the, uh, the 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 child wonder star playing for Fulham. Mm-hmm. Um, went on to play for England, and you know, amazing player. Um. But yeah, I was playing for Arsenal and then I went out to uh, Canada, so to, to Montreal and played. So we played the season, but in America, they played the summer season. Right, yeah. So I was playing for the Canadian team. Um, and that's when I, um, yeah, got a, got a phone call. I think I was coming back for an England camp. And uh, Gary Mulcahy, who was the Fulham manager then, um he asked to, to meet up and, and sort of explain what was what was going on at Fulham, what the vision was, and, and would I be interested. And it was a real difficult, you know, place where I was in because I was at Arsenal. I really enjoyed playing for Arsenal. Obviously, Arsenal, you know, top team, um, winning everything in the top league. And then someone's asking you to drop, I think, two divisions yeah. mm. to, to a team that kind of no one's really heard of. But... <laughs> The vision was, I say no one's here heard of, I mean in women's football, um, you know, the, the, but the vision of the club and what it wanted to be and, and the fact that it was going professional, mm. although I was at Arsenal, it still weren't professional. So to be able to train every day, to be able to, you know, have coaches on site, get help, you know, edu- be more educated in football, but, you know, the other things be be able to, you know, eat the right foods and be able to rest at the right time. So all those, all those different things sort of, you know, you know, sort of thought long and hard about it. Um, I remember speaking to the England manager and sort of saying, would that um, affect me being picked for England? And she was like, well, no, I pick players on form. So as long as I was playing well, then, then that shouldn't have been a problem. Um, and then it was just weighing up for pros and cons and I, I just felt if I didn't take the opportunity that Fulham were offering me I felt like I'd really regret it yeah. um, so, so that's why I did it when you said that um, yeah, like Alfie had sold or the club sold this vision to you the story that's gone around at Fulham anyway is that he saw the uh, 99 World Cup final and I, in America I think there's like 80,000 people there or something and just had this like light bulb moment like oh yeah women's football is going to be massive so Fulham should should like put together the first professional team is that something they actually deliberately said to you or was that just sort of something that was happening at the time that was feeding into everyone's consciousness um no that was that was yeah pretty much the story um so so basically yeah the american i think 99 world cup um he he'd seen and heard that the fa were making a professional league in three years time right okay, so yeah. he, was to to put together a Fulham team um, that would obviously win the league, get us into the top league by the time the league went professional, and have a head start on everybody. And that was that was the aim, that was the goal. And I suppose that was what we achieved. But then, for whatever reason, the FA didn't make the professional league. So at that point, then I suppose plans were were, were relooked at and. Uh, um, unfortunately, it went. Uh, Fulham went back to being semi-professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for those few years, window, I think that's a really interesting time, definitely in Fulham's history, because you said that you had to drop two tiers to sort of to play professional football for Fulham. But actually, at that exact same period of time, 
a lot of the men were doing the same thing. I think Chris Coleman dropped down two divisions, didn't he, to play for Fulham? In he the, did. Um, yeah. And there was a few Alan players. Alan Goma as well, I think. He, he joined. Goma. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He, he dropped down to, to play for us. So there was a lot of like similarities between the men and the women's sides. And I think you were at Motspur as well, weren't you, with Tagana's team training. The women were training yeah. here as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, the first season we were um, at Motspur Park. Um, it was fantastic because... You know, you, you, you kind of got to see, because none of us have been professional. So yeah. you had to, to really, for us, it was, it was, I suppose, kind of like an experiment. Yeah. Um, you know, take a group, because you think it's just, you know, turning professional, you just train more. But you don't think about the effect that it actually has on your body. Um, you know, because women's football isn't, hasn't had the same pathway as men's football. So none of us had come through like a youth system you know, the, the amount of hours that youth male players would, would have in their, you know, in their locker, in their, in their bank is, um, is so much greater than, than the amount of football that we've played. So being able to train your body to then train yeah. um, every day, it was something that was new. And, and probably I think there was probably uh, a, lot of, a lot of learning done by the, the people that were, were in charge for that first season. Because, I mean, from us, we were always like, why are we training more than the men? Right. <laughs> we were in like twice a day. And it was like the men existed one time, you know, in the morning and then they'd be gone. And we were like, hold on, what's going on? <laughs> so, you know, I think the whole, um, looking at the whole logic of, of how you train and not just, you know, doing things for the sake of being there. I think it was working out what what's going to have the most impact. And I definitely think that that came more into fruition in year two and year three that we understood like actually what's the benefit of having us at training and then, you know, making sure that people were resting enough and, um, and everything like that where year one, it was just like blast <laughs> everyone. So you really were basically guinea pigs. I mean, they ran you to the ground that first year. Wow. I'd say so, but I mean, I, I, like I say, I don't regret. Um, I don't regret joining and 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 being part of it. And yeah. it was a learning curve for all of us. And you only really knew success, really, with Fulham you after won that. Everything, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had some fantastic years. Um, you know, I think you know our goal was we, we, well, we were set. Quite an obvious goal is to, is to win the league, get promoted, win the league, get promoted. Um, and you know, sometimes it was it was quite tough when we'd go to play against teams that obviously weren't as good enough, right. and we'd get off the coach, um, you know, and there uh, you'd see their players looking and being like, oh, you know, there's <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the internationals walking off, um, and for us. Kind of, kind of like sometimes morally you kind of like oh this is this doesn't morally, feel great but yeah because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah, we just thought we've won this game we, we didn't I know that sounds really bad but just the way you know you can have a massive impact and in, and in, 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 in how you how you conduct yourself um, and yeah sometimes we, we'd walk off the coach obviously we needed to still win the game but mentally we'd won the game against the opposition um just from stepping so off the right, bus that is incredible yeah you could you, i know it sounds really bad but you could see it but for us it was about staying really focused and, and pushing mm. each other um yeah. and make sure that we did you know if we didn't take it for granted that we would get promoted we had to we had to make sure that we, we won the league and got promoted. You mentioned um, pushing each other, uh, Rachel. Uh, there's a story, like we're doing a bit of myth debunking here <laughs> or, or otherwise, but there's a story that uh, your manager said, you can have the day off if you win 12 nil <laughs> today. Correct or incorrect? <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> Is that where, yeah, that's where correct. we were at. Amazing. Yeah, we kind of that was a pact never to uh, never to say this. So. Oh really? <laughs> um, I'll never tell anyone. So we're breaking a pact right now. <laughs> no, uh, when we were when we were in season because it just sounds a bit disrespectful, doesn't it? Um, yeah. But Little yeah, they, <laughs> twelve nil. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the team, or yeah. will you not tell us? 
you know what it happened quite a few times so um no. <laughs> so anytime you won 12 nil you'd get the next day off no it wasn't no it wasn't that it was you know like at half time they were winning four nil it's kind of like don't drop off yeah we need you to go again we need to keep up and it was more about the keeping up the performance um and how we were playing rather than so his way to do it was um was setting goals and targets. <laughs> That's what I say. You're uh, trying to dress it up like there was some morals behind it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. It sounds bad, and it, it feels even worse. Is it right? now, so again? Is part of this uh, this myth is that you didn't celebrate at eleven nil. You only celebrated when that twelfth goal went in. <laughs> So you guys were literally ball out the back of the net, running back to the spot, even at like 10 nil, 11 nil. Do you know what? It, it, it is bad. <laughs> like it would be like, you'd get to, say if it was 4 nil, and then you get to 6 and you'd see your people going, come on, come on. <laughs> like, the other team must be thinking, what? And then you'd, you only be get to like, I don't know. I don't know if 12 was the ultimate answer. I think they were different scores. But um but yeah, it, once you got closer to the number, you'd see people celebrating. And, and obviously once we passed it, yeah, celebrating you know, like, goal, um, so. you know when a team goes one nil up and then the coach goes to everyone, like taps the head and goes, nil nil, yeah? <laughs> nil nil, yeah. yeah? In my head, it's you lot is thinking, 11 nil, yeah? <laughs> 11 nil, <Yeah>. focus. <laughs> You're still, still a way to go. <laughs> Forget it. Oh my word, that's brilliant. I'm also, it's so bad, but it's- <laughs> no, is it, I mean, at any point did it did 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 it because you guys were the first professional team, you were winning so much. Did it ever feel like there there wasn't enough of a challenge at any point for you guys? Um, no, no, because like the first season. So although in the league there may not have been um, that much challenge but uh, uh, like I say go, we were always reverted back to our goal and it was just to win the league so no matter what we were focused on winning the league um, we got to the FA Cup final in our first season to come up against Arsenal mm. um, and then that game like I think I feel like that was probably a turning point for all of us at Fulham is because in the media not that there was loads but the little bit of media there was it was like a battle of who's the underdog Right. Arsenal were like going for well, Fulham, they're professional, so they're gonna win this. Mm. Like we're you know, we're up against it, it's gonna be difficult for us. And we're going, Yeah, okay, we're professional, but we're not playing any really competitive games. So mm. this is the first game and also with two tiers below, you know, for us it's like we're the massive underdogs, like yes. you know it, so it was like it was really quite strange that both teams and um yeah, for us in that game, we, we I think there was, was there a penalty and we missed it. I, I don't know, but we lost the game anyway. Um, but in a way, in a strange way, I feel like that was the best thing that happened to us. Right. Because then the next season, you saw kind of a different animal from all of mm-hmm. us is that, you know, we wanted to dig deeper, wanted to be better. Mm. Um, you know, and, and, and obviously, you know, I think the next season we went, we got the treble, I think could be wrong um, which was great there was a, also a little bit of Hollywood wasn't there um, at Motspur one time again <laughs> this might be missed but I understand is it the, the Bend It Like Beckham crew came down is that right um, yeah I feel like we went to them but, but oh, so yeah, they, 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 they didn't come to Motspur you, you guys all jumped on the bus and headed that way yeah I feel I, I think that we went to was it like H- Hounslow or something like that, they were filming it. Okay. I can't remember, but but yeah, we we were in it. I mean, if you you, you have to make sure you keep your eyes open for all <laughs> of it because it's so quick. But um, the we play in um the black Fulham training kit um that their team plays against us, and then also we were playing in a blue and a green kit. So they they split up the team basically um to to play against. Um, but yeah, we were in that. I, I think they wanted. They wanted to do more, but obviously because of our training schedule. So maybe maybe they did want to come to Motspur Park and, and do more with the team. But because of the training schedule it, and filming just takes so long. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I just don't think it worked. But but we were in we were in a part of Bend It Like Beckham. Claim to fame. That's <laughs> that's amazing. And the catering as well is is pretty good on, on films and TV as well. So I'm sure that 
your manager was a bit wary of you being on set too long if it's always like a strict diet and the training's out the window do you know what i mean yeah definitely i'm sure we would have uh, sold them cakes <laughs> and them pastries oh definitely <laughs> there's just there's too much food on sets um it, we, again another huge achievement for you absolutely massive playing for england um how did that feel firstly representing your country um you know i always find it hard to actually answer that mm. um put into words it's just it's, a, it's an unbelievable feeling uh, I think you know my debut was when I was 17 um, I feel there's always um, a good thing about having youth in your team because I was very naive to what was happening <laughs> mm. and I just wanted to go and play football so right, I just yeah. sort of went out and, um, and there was there was quite a good blend of um, youth and experience in the team at that time so um yeah, I just always found it fun going away with the England team and just, I suppose, the the, um, the competitiveness was in the challenge playing against, um, you know, other national teams was always higher than what it was um, playing in our league. So, oh. so yeah, it was, yeah, it was just, it was just, you know, fun to go out there and, and <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever really saw it as, you know, didn't look at it as like, oh, I want to play a hundred times or even, you know, get to those figures. That's just like, wow, this is cool. You know, I'm one of the best in, in England at this time. So, yeah. Rachel, I'm sure you've been asked this um, loads of times, but like, how does it feel now to watch England's women football teams and stuff like that? Do you sort of like, do you reflect on it with a sense of longing, feeling like you wish that infrastructure being involved like when you were playing or is it like there must be immense amount of pride because you, you're a hero to all of those footballers like paved away in many ways so like how do you like did you watch the, like the tournament last year and how does it kind of like feel to, to do that um yeah definitely watched it of course um yeah it's, uh, immensely proud of what the what the team have achieved um i think for me looking back we, we've always had fantastic players um, as an England team um, but probably haven't had the the backing the support you know to put it all together mm. and I feel like now this team you know it's got the investment it's got the support it's got the backing it's got everything that they need you know in, in, in football they're always looking for those little one percent and those little margins um, of gaps to put you ahead of somebody else and and I feel like this team, you know, is, has got that right support to to be able to go on and obviously do what they did in in terms of winning the Euros. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's you know it's it's fantastic football. Definitely on the international side in terms of like where you know games are being sold out. Um, you know, there's a real interest. I think that, oh. that football's really in a good place. It now needs to translate over to into like yeah. lower oh. into women's football um, to uh, to make sure that at every level we're we're getting good support. The current um, the current sort of uh, England squad, surely, I mean, a number of them must view you as a as a bit of, of a hero of, of theirs. Have you had any of them come up to you and you know? have their kind of Ian Wright moment with you? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. That's not how I foresaw that question going. But surely that, you you know, you, you, you know, you held the record for most caps at one point. You were first professional female footballer. I mean, your influence on this current team and, and this current squad and, and all, to be honest, all current professional um, female footballers is, is, is is massive? No, do you do you ever feel that way at all? Um, no, I, I, yeah, I, I think um, I think listening to to the current players, you know, that they they understand that a lot a lot of players, a lot of very talented players, went before them that didn't have the opportunities um, that they've got, and they have to now, you know, they now have to push it on uh, to the next level in 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 obviously the way that they can, um, you know, just like me before I played, people, you know, sort of say that I was a pioneer and paved the way, but there was a lot of women playing football 
before me um, mm. that were hugely talented but didn't get the opportunities that I got. Um, so I think it's just trying to trying to push the game on and take it to take it to the next level, which which obviously I feel like now with the players that play now they understand better than what we did and definitely better than the, the generation before us. They understand the power of of their position. Mm. Um, you only get listened to if you're winning. So um, they have to keep performing, playing well, and they have to keep winning. On that note, I think that's yeah. the per- perfect place <laughs> to leave it. Brothers. Thank you so much. That's it. You've got to be training twice a day, remember? That's that's how you do that. You've got to keep that training up. Um, Rachel, honestly, it's been, a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time. No problem. Thanks for putting up with us. No, no. Yeah. Thanks, Sienna. Rachel Yankee. Isn't that lovely? Wasn't that lovely? That was a huge and recipient of the Forever Fulham. Yeah, award, like pitch, yeah, the the, the 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 week before I think you know. So I'd got to meet her properly in person, and um, yeah. yeah, she's just she's, she's just cool, and she's been yeah been through just just here. Um, you know, I know she said this a few times, but having to shave her hair, basically having to pretend to be a boy. You realise yeah, how right. far the games come. I know. You know, and and the fact that now I think crazy to think Fulham, who were the you know the groundbreaking team to begin with. Now, yeah, they're they're almost a little bit behind the game. They're having yeah, to start yeah. a little bit. Like, you know, I, I, don't get me wrong. I think we'll catch up. We'll be up there with with the big teams without a doubt, without a doubt. But now we're kind of having to start almost a little bit behind, yeah. even though we were the the trendsetters. You yeah, know? the shift in sands of football, Ivan. Hashtag deep that. Like um, that. Who's on next week? Ah, oh, so it's our favourite French wizard. Oh. <laughs> and we have we saved the best till last i mean it's like i mean i mean don't know how much to go into because we save it for next week but he he we spoke about this with the coopers with charlie cooper yeah and they spoke about the next guest sylvan Leguinsky, mm. as if he was um a sort of mythical Cre- fragment yeah. of yeah. your of our imaginations yeah because he came at such a halcyon time for fulham yeah but also he had that sort of laissez-faire attitude, famously smoked, yeah, um, and but also just ran games. So yeah. when, when when we anyway, let's let's do this next week because yeah. there's so much to get. There's into. a lot to talk about with Sylvan. Yeah, love him, and he was amazing, wasn't he? He was the best. Yeah, honestly, we in fact, if he's watching, he, he we need we didn't exchange numbers, so maybe we give him a little way he can contact us, and we can all hang out and be friends. Love you, Sylvan. We do love you. Love you, Rachel. Come on, Fulham.